Eventually, at the end of 2005, after much soul-searching, the government appointed Idris Jala as the new CEO of the company. His goal was to turn the airline into, in his own words, a five-star carrier. And to do so, he launched a five-point business turnaround plan. The first step was maintaining the high quality of the airline. The second was lowering the expenses by reducing structural and operational costs. One of these measures meant the government spending another 700 million ringgit on a mutual separation scheme. The third step was to have competitive fares. Idris wanted to offer low and competitive fares that would still make a profit. Therefore, he had must do 1 million tickets of zero fare domestic flights in 2008. Which leads to the fourth step, getting more customers for more revenue. By satisfying the public's needs, there'll be an increase of customers, which will lead to an increase of revenue. Finally, the fifth step was to grow its network and capacity. By 2007, the airline was back in the black. It achieved a record-breaking profit of 610 million ringgit in 2007. In order to shore up its coffers even more, Musk undertook a rights issue which saw the government inject a further 1.3 billion ringgit into the company. After gaining revenue and profit, the airline was able to invest in growing its network and capacity to open up more routes and obtain more planes. This will lead to sustainable, profitable growth. This was a great milestone for both Mas and Idris, but the key issue he didn't tackle was the problem of excessive staff. Despite the rationalisation of both domestic and international routes, Mas still had 20,000 souls on its payroll. The Mas union was starting to show its mettle. As the company was seen to have been bailed out by the government on several occasions, the Mas union often at times gave an air of invincibility due to its sheer number. But we'll talk more about the union soon. At the end of 2008, Idris Jala resigned and moved on to be the CEO of Pamandu, the performance management and delivery unit. To replace him was his second in command, Tunku Azmil Zahruddin. While Idris's leaving had some worried over the fate of Mas yet again, Idris himself had personally endorsed Tunku Azmil, his former right hand and CFO, as the man for the job. Tunku Azmil was tasked with carrying out BTP2, which many said was Idris's legacy. Under BTP2, Mas aimed to post a profit of between 1.5 billion and 3 billion ringgit per annum by 2012. But as we can see after the years after Idris left, Rask and Kars started dropping again. Critics pointed to these falling figures as proof positive that all Idris did was cut the low-hanging fruit. That fundamentally, nothing permanent had changed at Mas and the same mistakes were being made over and over again. One of the biggest that constantly gets brought up is Mas's 25-year, non-negotiable deal with politically connected Brahim's Holdings Berhad for the catering, worth an alleged 6.25 billion ringgit. Then came what could have been the biggest game-changer in Malaysia's aviation landscape. In August 2011, Mars and Air Asia initiated a share swap arrangement. Under the deal valued about 364 million US dollars, Kazana would take a 10% stake in Air Asia, whilst Air Asia's major shareholder Tune Air would get a 20.5% stake in Mars. Kazana would later acquire a 10% stake in Air Asia X. The share swap could see Mars's return to profitability, partly due to cost savings from the realignment of routes, which were estimated to be up to 400 million ringgit annually. At that time, roughly 70% of the combined capacity of Mars and Air Asia were deployed on overlapping routes, which undermined yields, load factor, and ultimately profitability for both. This did not sit well with the staff of Mars. Eight aviation workers' unions led by the Mars Employees' Union, or Maso, threatened Kazana to cancel the deal or face a mutiny. Maso even urged the International Transport Workers' Federation to boycott both airlines if the deal went through. The main concern that the union voiced was that the deal was akin to a takeover by Air Asia, known for its aggressive brand of cost cutting, which would eventually lead to restructuring and job cuts at Mas. After eight months, the airlines had reached an impasse and decided to terminate the share swap. This showed the political influence of the labor unions as AMNO, bruised by what happened in 2008, started its march to the 2013 elections. This was emphasized in analyst reports where it noted that cutting costs was seen as a major political liability. Selangor, where Mas had most of its operations, is also the state that Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib wants to win back in 2013 elections. In the midst of the controversial share swap, Tuko Azmil had resigned as CEO and moved to Kazana as the Executive Director in Investments. This came as a surprise to some as he has said in the press that he wasn't going anywhere a week before he tended. However, behind the scenes market talk was that Azmil was having differences of opinion with the potential new management. Mas was once more left without a permanent captain. Coming to its aid again, the government in 2010 initiated yet another rights issue to the tune of 2.3 billion ringgit.